Hi guys, welcome to Planet House Plant. Today we're talking about the best and worst plants to get if you're a beginner. Uh, I'm just gonna get straight into it because who can be asked with preamble? So number one is Monstera. Uh, if you've watched my videos before, you know I love Monstera, especially for beginners, just because they're so hard to kill. I mean, they're easy to make look crap, but then so is any plant. But in to actually kill Monstera is quite, it's not difficult. I mean, if you overwatered it consistently, it would die. But I'm guessing you wouldn't do that if you were watching this video. So, you know, if you were that bothered. You'd, you'd, do, you'd do your research and know that they don't need watering that often. But what I love about Monstera is how easy it is to get them to grow. I say easy, if you don't have the light, you can't. But if you want to grow those big leaves, you can give them loads of light and pretty much, not neglect them, but they don't need much in terms of fertilising, fancy soils, anything like that. They tend to be, you know, pretty chill and they'll still grow really, really well and really big mature leaves if you give them a ton of light. It does help if you grow them up. So if you either get a moss pole and tie them on or you get like a plank of wood or grow them up a wall or something, then they'll cling on themselves. Uh, but they're just, they're really rewarding if you look after them well. Uh, and if you don't look after them well, they probably won't die. So great for beginners. Plant number two is Aglianema. Aglianema, I think they're a little bit more popular now that they're also called Chinese evergreens. And they're just a pretty plant and they are a true medium light plant uh, in that if you give them, if you give them bright and direct light, they'll probably be okay. But if you give them bright light, they'll burn and they won't like that. So they come from the rainforest and they are plants that live on the forest floor. So they're not looking to ever get a lot of light. Plants like pothos, yeah, they start lower down, but they aim to grow up towards the light, whereas Aglianema don't. They're perfectly happy li living in medium light their whole lives. And they'll grow really big and full and lush. So if you have, if you don't have the best light, they're a really good option. I prefer Aglianema for beginners to Calathea because they are less fussy. They would love to have high humidity and really high water quality, but they're not that fussy. So if you give an Aglianema tap water, sure, they would prefer rainwater or filtered water, but they won't put out the crispy leaves that a Calathea might. So you can give them like the best care ever and they will grow really, really well. But if you give them like subpar care, they won't be that bothered. So yeah, they're a really nice option. If you love the look of Calathea, but don't really have the time or inclination to care for them. So you don't get the really pretty leaves that you get on Calathea, but what they lack in sort of the design of the leaf they make up for in colour, you can get some really pretty, like if you like pink and red ones, there's some really, really nice options there and they're not particularly expensive. If you want a big one, I mean, you could pay a fortune for it, but for like a standard, I don't have mine in here, but I've got one that's like that big, look at that's the same size, nothing. Yeah, so I've got, you can get a Calathea about that big for under £10. So they're, they're a really nice option if you're not particularly flush with cash. My third great beginner plant is Syngonium. Syngonium also come in really nice colours. You can get like pink ones and you get mottled ones and stuff like that. But they are not too fussy about light. They aren't that bothered about water quality and they will tell you when they're thirsty. They're really, really bad for drooping. And unlike peace lilies, so peace lilies are dramatic, but syngoniums, they will take longer to recover. I wouldn't recommend waiting for them to droop. It's better to say every week, check the soil, see if they need watering. But when you're a beginner you and you see a syngonium drooping, you water it, it will come back. It may take a few hours. I have a tri leaf wonder that sometimes will droop for like a day before it, you know, pops back up like there was nothing wrong. And they're also a great plant if you, if you want to get into collecting plants they are a good one for beginners because there's quite a few interesting cheap ones you can learn to look after them and then you can sort of go there's various variegated variegation there's various variegated syngoniums and there's like mottled ones and there's pink ones and there's there's just a lot of different types so they are like a nice one if you want to get into collecting but you're really not up to spending like two grand on a plant. I'm sure there are two grand syngoniums, but there's also plenty of cheaper ones too. Syngonium are also a really good one if you are interested in switching to semi-hydro because they don't have like the big thick root roots that are really easy to wash off. They have like, some of them have quite intricate, delicate roots, but they wash off really easily and they recover really quickly. So if you're looking to get into lecker, then maybe practice on some syngoniums because they're not like super easy, but they, they're quick to recover. So 
you'll, you can learn a lot from them. So people always say pothos are a good plant to start with, and they are. Problem with, say, like everyone says, get a golden pothos, that, you know, they're so easy. They are easy, and if you grow them up, they will droop when they're thirsty. But if you just have it like, if you have it hanging, it's more difficult to see. Whereas with Skindapsis pictus, which is my fourth great plant for beginners, their leaves curl up really obviously. I actually had this idea. The reason that Skindapsis pictus is on this list is yesterday when I was um, brainstorming this video, I noticed that mine, oh, it's not there, but it needed a drink. And when they're thirsty, they have thicker, like satiny leaves and they're more succulent than a regular pothos because they're not pothos. I don't think they're pothos. They're in, obviously they're in the same family, but they're not exactly the same. So when they're thirsty, their leaves curl up, which makes it that bit easier to tell when they're thirsty. And I just soak mine and they're fine again. The only thing is if you have low light, they do have this innate desire to vine. Uh, and you may end up with vines everywhere with like one tiny leaf on the end if you don't have the light. If you give them the light, they get like surprisingly big leaves but just a warning they're not like pothos that they're, they're one of the ones that they'll survive in low light but it's more difficult to get them to thrive if you get a golden pothos yeah you can keep it in low light and it's fine but if you give it bright light like a ton of light they you get some really interesting mature leaves the leaves grow huge they grow frustrations and i just think that's really cool compared to like leaving it to die in a corner sadly and i just think you're missing out if you subject a plant to low light when really it could thrive in bright light. And the final plant that I picked, I actually picked a, I was gonna say genus, is that what it is? I don't think it's a genus, I think it's a family. It's a group, uh, and that's Jacina. Uh, and I love Jacina, so I've had this, so this was actually one of my first house plants and it was tiny when I bought it and it needed nothing from me. They are so not picky at all. I mean, this actually had thrips at one point and just sort of shook them itself. It's just, it just doesn't need anything. Goes to a lot of water, like it dries out really quickly, but you can also leave it for a while and it, it won't, you know, if you leave it to like really dry out, it will be fine a little bit like succulent. But handily, um, Sansevieria were actually reclassified as Dracaena, um, I wanna say last year, it may have been before that. So we can also include snake plants in the beginners category and I'm, Think about snake plants and I, I love snake plants and I think they're rewarding to grow but they tend to be sold as a low light house plant and then like you may as well buy a fake one whereas if you really grow them if you like put them outside and just give them a ton of light you know put them in a sunroom conservatory whatever they look incredible and they don't grow like they tend to have this thing where they grow long and spindly now don't get me wrong you can give them loads of light and they will grow like the odd long spindly leaf just for fun but they look a lot better if you give them a lot of light and they grow faster. They're never gonna grow like super quick, but they will grow much faster with more light. Uh, another thing about snake plants is I think when it comes to propagating plants, there are a few plants more rewarding to propagate than snake plants just because, God, it takes so, so long and you don't think it's gonna work. So you, when you um, have a snake plant to propagate it, you can divide them because they get little, little to, they get little pups but you can also chop off a leaf and I chop out a triangle at the bottom so it's got like two points and then put it in a glass of water for months I mean months 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 like six months and you might just get like a couple of roots it is I don't know it's just sort of a fun experiment to do because you don't have to do anything it's literally just a case of waiting like they're not even that fussy about having the water changed I think just because they come from such a hellishly arid environment they are prepared to grow in pretty much any situation, which is why it's so hard to kill them and why they will not die if you put them in a cupboard. They won't thrive, but they won't die either. And uh, they are a good plant. I know it's like said over and over again that they're good for beginners and they are, but please don't put them somewhere dark. They don't like it. That's all I have to say about that. Right, so we had the five plants I would recommend for beginners and now we've got five plants that I wouldn't recommend. So number one is Calathea. Calathea are just, uh, they want so much and it never says on the label what they want. On labels for houseplants, they always say something that sounds so like cryptic and it 
it's true it's like bright indirect light that is what they want but if you're a complete beginner that's not helpful to you what you want is right put this in it if it's in a west facing window have it two feet away from the window if it's in a you know actual instructions but calathea like you the label would need to be that big for all the stuff that can go wrong uh in terms of water quality watering light not to mention they are probably guaranteed to get spider mites at some point Obviously they don't put that on because no one would buy them. Except I think they would because they're so, so pretty. I mean, the first time I went into like a, a garden centre, a houseplant garden centre, which had a lot of houseplants, I was like, wow, because they have such cool uh, patterns, colours, textures. I mean, those, the first time I felt a velvet touch, I couldn't believe it. Even the, you know, the Rubifabia, the really bog standard Calathea that you can often buy and they've got those orange flowers. They're the only Calathea I know that has fancy flowers, but yeah, those, they've got really velvety under, the hell is this, under the leaves. And I was just transfixed. So I think even if somebody was like, this, will, you will take this home and it will die, I think people would still buy them because they're so pretty. Uh, and that leads me on to the second plant, which I think is exactly the same. They're, they're cheap, they're common, and they're impossible to keep alive. They're not impossible. They're difficult to keep alive because of the conditions they require. But we all buy them anyway and then watch them die. And that is, if you've not guessed, maiden hair ferns. I have a maiden hair fern. She has two fronds and three new fronds coming up. You need high humidity. Not, not stunningly high, but in general higher than average. And they hate to dry out. Now I have a Boston fern and that doesn't like to dry out. But if it does dry out, that's okay. It won't do anything but with maiden hair ferns if you let them dry out and they like to be almost like boggy wet in my experience like i don't know how they don't rot i'm assuming they're like marginal and i've just <laughs> i'm gonna add a sixth to this because i've thought of a sixth um plant that you shouldn't get if you're a beginner so yeah if you've got high humidity and it decent light then you could probably keep a maiden hair fern but you need to check that they're damp all the time i keep mine on the bathroom window bathroom windowsill because when i'm in the shower i can i bottom water it and i can just put a bit of water from the shower in it they're not that fussy about water quality from what i can tell because mine is growing quite well but they need brighter light than a lot of other ferns but if it's too bright they burn they just it's they're so easy to care for if you have them in the right spot and you don't let them dry out. Cause it, but even if they dry out, they will regrow. You may lose the fronds that you have, but you can just chop them off and they'll regrow. But it's just getting them in the right spot. So brighter light than you would think. So mine's in a south facing window, but it's textured glass. So it's not like bright, bright. And there's also a house next door blocking it. But I would say just any, probably any windowsill they would do well on. But it's just different to normal not normal, it's different to other ferns and you need the humidity otherwise they just crinkle up and they they will die overnight, it's heartbreaking. And um, aphids love them, same with all ferns, if you've got aphids, say goodbye. Number three is any plant over £20, it's just sad and discouraging when they die. So wait until you kind of know what you're doing, uh, watch a few videos, read a few articles and yeah, succulents are one of those plants that people th people sort of say are great for beginners and they're not great for beginners because they have a certain set, what I would consider great for beginners is something that will be tolerant of a lot of different things. Succulents aren't tolerant of low light or overwatering. It will kill them or make them look crap and then kill them. If you have the right conditions, i.e. a lot of light, they're fine. They don't need a lot in terms of like re being repotted or anything because it's got quite shallow root systems and they're okay for propagating but in general I just think there's better plants for beginners that are more rewarding that are faster growing and that you can sort of helicopter a little bit as opposed to a succulent which needs watering like every two months and then just to be left by itself. Right number five is alocasia. Alocasia are not forgiving and they do weird things that make you frightened that you've killed them but they're also easy to kill so it they're just oh they're just a lot of stress. They also get spider mites. The Alocasia poly and the Zebrina are other than that are probably the ones that crop up most commonly in garden centres, certainly around here anyway. There was a spate last year when there was a load of stingrays. And they look really cool. Especially like the dragon scale. 
Although actually, if I was going to recommend an alocasia for a beginner, I'll probably say a dragon scale because in my experience, they're a little bit more tolerant and they grow, they seem to grow really fast. Like mine tends to put out like two or three leaves at once. Whereas, as I'm saying that, I'm like, I've clearly got more than one plant in the pot. Oh well. But it was 14 99 it's not like it was expensive, e expensive either. I don't know if that is just in the UK. I know people pay a fortune for dragon scales elsewhere. But if it's cheap in the UK, chances are it'll become cheap in other places. So if you want a dragon scale, maybe just hang fire for a bit and see if the price goes down. But yeah, mine was 14 99 so I love that one. My Zabrina currently has no leaves. My Stingray has two, just because of the time of the year. They go dormant in winter. You can sometimes, like I kept mine from, I kept mine from going dormant, but it wasn't growing. So we're currently looking very sad there. But yeah, they're just a nightmare. So wait until you're in a place where you know more what you're doing and you can troubleshoot and you're not going to be stressed out about it dropping two leaves for everyone it produces because that is just what they're like. Looking after alocasia is as much an exercise in managing your emotions as it is taking care of a plant just because of the way they are. They are also a plant that grow well in a ton of sun and they grow in boggy conditions as well so they're not so bad about being overwatered if they have the light. If they don't have the light and you're over water, then they'll just rot and die. Right, so bonus number six for plants that I wouldn't recommend beginners get uh, is anything carnivorous. So your Venus fly traps, pitcher plants, plants, they don't make good house plants. Now, I may get people going, you're, no, I love them, I have hundreds, they're so easy. They need totally different care to a lot of other house plants. So they need, they come from really boggy areas, so they need a lot of water. And in general, the more water a plant goes through, the less tolerant they are of tap water. So not only do they need a lot of water, like you can keep, I've got a sundew that we keep basically constantly with a bit of water in the bottom. I think a lot of people get carnivorous plants to get rid of fungus gnats, but they're not, you'd need a, you'd need a lot to like, do you know what I mean? They're not eating like hundreds a day. They just eat a few. I'm not saying don't get one. If you want one, try one. But just beware. They need different care than... Then even the label says, like, carnivorous plants tend to come from the rainforest. They come from boggy areas, so they need a little bit more light than, like, pothos or something. You know, they, they, they a bit of light they like, bright and direct. They don't like to dry out at all. They like high humidity, they like high water quality. They can be fussy about fertilizers because they're just not used to any kind of like, because of how quickly they take up water, they're not massive on like chemical fertilizers. Obviously they can catch gnats, they can, you know, catch their own food, but you might not have any food for them because you don't live in a rainforest. It's just, a, it's a whole big thing and it's like a whole, if you want to get into carnivorous plants, like, go for it but if you just want a lot of house plants you're gonna need to learn two totally different ways of looking after plants so they're not ideal for beginners i've killed two i've kept one alive looks crap so yeah and don't think that kind of response don't get pests they do mine got aphids they eat aphids like aphids is something that they would eat lots of but not enough like they can't eat enough like the aphids will eat the plant before the plant can eat all the aphids. It was sad, but, and a bit ironic, but that's just life. So yeah, I, I hope that was helpful. I hope there was something on there that was a bit different from the million other beginner plants out there. I think the distinction I wanted to make was this is for people that are interested in learning about plants as opposed to people that don't know anything about plants but want to have some in their house that don't need a lot of effort, if you see what I mean. So um, whilst, so when you're first beginning, yeah, you want your Monstera, Aglaonema, Syngonium, Skindapsis, Pothos, you know, that kind of thing, and Dracaena. They're just brilliant ones when you're first starting because it's a, you've got a nice range of, it's raining, they've got a nice range of sort of requirements. You can learn a lot about different plants from them but they're all forgiving. All right, I hope that was helpful and um, I will see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe so I can retire. I'm joking. I'm not, I'm not joking at all. All right, thanks for watching, bye.